Hi, John with eTrailer. Listen, there's no better way to open up your world to accessories like bike racks and cargo carriers and even light duty towing than with this right here. This is eTrailer's class three receiver hitch that we installed on our 2022 Audi Q5. Now, in my opinion, this is the perfect size hitch for this Audi. This is gonna be a class three hitch, which means that this receiver opening right here is two inches by two inches square. Um, and we've reinforced the collar on this for just a little bit better performance out of it. Now, all of your accessories out there, you're gonna get a huge market of two inch receiver accessories like that when it comes to cargo carriers or bike racks or other accessories like that. It's one of the most popular sizes. So you're gonna get the most choices when you're choosing um, this size hitch for the Audi. Now, one thing that stands out differently uh, with this hitch versus the other hitch is this is powder coated black, um, a flat black. And I find that on these Audis especially, it really blends in nicely with this lower flat black fascia trim that they have on them. Now, as far as pinhole sizes here, this is gonna be a 5 8 inch pin and clip. Now, this isn't included, and you're gonna need this if you're new to towing. Now, if you already have um, accessories like bike racks and cargo carriers, or if you're in the market for them, a lot of them will already include the pin and clip or some sort of anti-rattle device. Now, if you are towing, you're gonna to be interested in the wire type chain hangers here. This style, I find, is one of the easiest to use, uh, either for standard S-hook, both ways, or even a heavier duty clevis style. It's just gonna be easier to get on and off. Now we've had a lot of questions as far as the kick sensors on the Audi and if you install the trailer hitch. And I want to let you know that even for something uh, like the e-trailer hitch here, it works and it's going to work for you on both sides no matter what. Let's get some measurements to see how our hitch fits on the Audi. This is going to help you out. Let's start with ground clearance from the ground to the top of the inside collar. Looking at 13 and a quarter inches. And then from the center of the pinhole out to the edge of our fascia here, we're looking at three inches. Now, these numbers are important. If you're gonna be towing with your Audi, more than likely you're gonna want a ball mount that has a slight rise to it. So it keeps your trailer and Audi level. Um, or if you're in the market for or have uh, accessories that fold up like in a stowed position you want to make sure that they're not going to impact the back of your fascia. Now let's take a look at some of the weight capacities of our hitch. Um, this hitch has good numbers. Uh, we're looking at tongue weight rating, the force pushing down on the hitch, that's 750 pound tongue weight rating and as far as the uh, gross trailer weight rating, uh, the force pulling on the hitch, you're looking at 5,000 pounds. Now, that's going to be the weight of your trailer and anything that you put in it or on it. Now, you definitely want to check with your Audi's owner's manual to make sure that you can actually tow that much weight. Now, when it comes to installation of this hitch, they do rank this a 10 out of 10. Um, this is very involved as far as installation. We're going to be removing the rear fascia. Um, there isn't any drilling or cutting, uh, but there's some other uh, factors that go into this that make it fairly difficult for somebody to get this done um, in their garage. It's not impossible though. Um, so if you want to see what it takes to get this hitch installed on your Audi, or if you just want to know what it takes for a shop to install it for you so that you're informed when you go in, stick around. We're going to show you step by step. To start our installation, you're going to want to come to the rear of the Audi, grab a T25 uh, Torx bit, and there's four screws that we need to remove from the rear bumper fascia. Now keep your same T25 socket. Come over to the wheel well. We're over here on the driver's side. What we need to do is pull out this wheel trim here. Um, you're gonna have a series of clips in here. And I'll show you real quick. It's these guys right here. So just be careful when you're pulling on these, but these clips will bend in if you need a little bit of help. You can use a uh, plastic trim panel tool to get in there. 
most of the time on these Audis, these clips aren't too bad. They kind of behave. So just work your way slowly around. You'll also notice I have painter's tape on here. Uh, later on, we're gonna be removing this rear fascia. It's just gonna keep you from getting any scratches. And especially on these painted uh, wheel trims, just run a strip of tape down here just to safeguard yourself. Now, the reason we did this, you're gonna have some screws. One of them is up at the top. We can go ahead and get this one right now. And then inside on the liner, we can either start at the top or the bottom. We'll start at the bottom down here and we're gonna have just a series of screws working their way up to the top. We'll get this one on the bottom loose first and that'll enable us to fold this inner panel back here. And you're gonna see the other screws that are hiding behind that. Now grab a T20 Torx bit, open your lift gate. You're gonna have two T20 little tabs that you need to remove. Now while your hatch is open, fold back your floor liner here and we need to get the scuff panel out of here. If you fold the rubber back, you'll see the edge here. I'm gonna use that trim panel tool. I'm just gonna kind of pry up on it. Just work your way down nice and slow. Pop that off and set it off to the side. If you look straight down, on both sides, you're gonna have two rubber plugs. What we're interested in is the outer plugs here. Take that same trim panel tool and pop this plug out because behind it, we're gonna have a 10 millimeter nut that's on a stud. So you're probably going to need a deep socket and a swivel's gonna help. Um, so we'll get this lined up on here. You're going to have one of these on each side of the car. Hey, just real quick, I wanted to show you that um, our flange nut fell down um, just because it's so deep in the frame. So a magnet's definitely going to help in this situation. Now, later on, when we go to reinstall this, we'll have some tips for you on how to get these back onto that stud. But you probably want to get a magnet for this. Now go to either side of your Audi, and we're gonna get these interior trim panels off. You're just turning this a quarter turn. Now we've got a uh, 12 volt plug on this. We don't need to do anything with it. Just kind of set it off to the side. If you look down the pillar, you're gonna see a round cutout. I'm gonna try to show you this without uh, blocking the hole. Behind this, you're gonna have the same 10 millimeter flange nut that's back there. Now you wanna be careful when removing this one. Um, it's a little bit harder to get out with the magnet if you drop it. So you're gonna have one of these on each side. Now with everything removed on the inside, we can come around uh, to the rear fascia. Now, uh, there's a side note here that on these Audis, some of the models, they do not recommend disconnecting the wiring harnesses back here. Um, so this, uh, if this happens to get done on your model and you weren't supposed to do it, you may end up going to the dealer to reprogram your rear radar. So as a safety precaution, um, even though this isn't in the directions, we generally, as a rule of thumb, will not disconnect the rear fascia. We'll pull it off and have a cart like this set up on the side. So this is what we recommend to people while doing that. Um, we can begin on the cart side reach behind and just grab the fascia itself. I'm gonna pop out with my fingers up here at the top. And you'll see how it begins to remove. So we're gonna slide this out and then we can work our way around to the other side. Now the driver's side is already loose, just about to right here. It's a good idea to have some help with this. I got Jake here with me, and I'm just gonna do the same thing on the passenger side. We're gonna reach in, 
pop the fascia loose. Okay. Now there is no wiring harness over there. The harness that we don't want to disconnect is over where Jake's got it. So we're just going to swing this over so that we have enough room to install the hitch. As you can see, Audi doesn't give us a whole lot of room. Now we're going to remove our bumper beam. What that's going to uh, entail is we're going to have four 16 millimeter bolts on either side. So you're going to have this little bar here and the bumper beam. Just grab that, pull it off and set it off to the side. We will be reinstalling this. Now you may notice on your bumper beam that you've got a small gasket. The reason for this is that the frame on this is hollow on both sides. Now uh, this is not in the directions, but if this was my car, I would do the same thing. We don't want exhaust gases creeping into the car, so I've got some black RTV silicone seal in here and we're just going to run a small bead around and make sure that this frame remains sealed against gases and moisture. Before we raise our hitch into position let's take a quick look at the new hardware. We're not going to reuse the old factory hardware. This is going to come with eight of the cap screws and we're going to have conical teeth washer. On one side these are going to have teeth on them and we need to make sure that those are facing towards the end of the bolt so that they're applied against our hitch when we install it. So we can grab our hitch and align it with the studs that are on the Audi back here and then sandwich the hitch with your bumper beam. Obviously this is going to be something, again, if you've got some help, that's going to go a long way. Now we're going to reinstall the bottom bolts for now because we still have the bumper beam bracket that we need to install that goes on the top holes. And then don't forget the bumper beam bracket that's going to go across the top bolt holes. And basically what you want to do here is just keep everything loose until you get uh, all of the bolts in where they're supposed to go. And then make sure your hitch is good and centered. Snug these up. So I've got the hitch, the bumper beam, and the bracket um, centered up. I'm just going to snug these and then I'm going to torque them to the specs, and those specs are going to be in your installation manual. And a quick side note here, this new hardware that comes with the kit, it's actually one size up. It's a 17 millimeter, so just so you know. Now when reinstalling the fascia, pay particularly close attention to the driver's side, mainly this grommet on the wiring loom. Um, it needs to be reinstalled back onto the body here. And so it's going to be kind of tight, tight quarters, but make sure you get that on there to seal out any gases from the rear end here. Now real quick, we stopped uh, installing the fascia because I wanted to show you something on the bottom down here um, where you're going to have to thread like the bottom back panel of this. This is going to go under the hitch and then this outer edge towards the bumper goes above the hitch. Now as we continue to install the fascia this will slip back and go behind the hitch back here but for right now we stopped because this is holding our fascia up. Now is a great time to make sure everything's going to line up and to uh, reattach our grommet over here on the driver's side. Now as you slide the fascia closer to the car look down and you're going to see these alignment dowels, these are what we took those 10 millimeter flange nuts off and you'll see the holes 
on the bed. So this is gonna be your alignment. So just slide the hitch over. Just take your time, making sure everything gets aligned and properly installed. Here's a little tip for reinstalling um, these washer nuts. And, and you can use paper towel if you like, um, but just take a little piece of tape and I stick it on there and then take your socket, jam it on there and that's gonna hold it. Um, and paper towels are great. I like the tape because if you ever need to come back in here and take this apart, the tape's gonna stay. Now once you get all of the fasteners on the inside and then the back back here, you can move your way over uh, to the wheel wells and reattach all of those fasteners. Those should line up good for you now that the back is secured. And from there on out, you just reinstall all of the other fasteners that you took off in reverse order. So I wanted to show you um, underneath here that this hitch is able to go on without trimming. Um, you may have to kind of push this bracket together uh, but not too bad. Everything does fit nicely um, and organized. And once you have all of your fasteners tightened and secured, that's going to complete your installation of the e-trailer Class 3 receiver hitch on our 2022 Audi Q5.